Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Today is Friday, the 7th of January. We come to say goodbye to this, uh, this first week, this, the end of this first seven days of the new year, and ask God to sustain us and keep us through the night as we sleep. So let us pray. <clears throat> o God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. You gave your Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit, you established us as a royal priesthood, as you call us into your marvelous light. May our lives reflect, may our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God and are worthy of our praise forever. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. God's salvation has been openly shown to all people. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights, the anointed one who, on whom my spirit rests. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights, the anointed one in whom my spirit rests. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the psalm for this morning, for this evening, is Psalm 118. Psalm 118. 118. <clears throat> Psalm 118, and the refrain. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim his mercy endures forever. <laughs> Let those who fear the Lord proclaim his mercy endures forever. In my constraint, I called to the Lord. The Lord answered and set me free. The Lord is at my side. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? With the Lord at my side as my Savior, I will see the downfall of my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in the flesh. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. All the nations encompassed me, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They, they hemmed me in, they hemmed me in on every side, but by the name of the Lord, I drove them back. They swarmed about me like bees, they blazed like fire among thorns, but by the name of the Lord, I drove them back. Surely I was thrust to the brink but the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Joyful shouts of salvation sound from the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord raises up. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come, Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. 
The Lord is God. He has given us light. Link the pilgrims with cords right to the throne. Right to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. I will give thanks to you for you have become my salvation. Amen. And the prayer. Saving God, open the gates of righteousness that your pilgrim people may enter and be built into a living temple on the cornerstone of our salvation, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Great Psalm, Psalm 118. It's quoted, a number of these verses are quoted in the New Testament, of course. You can hear the echo of some of them, um, the stone the builders rejected have become the chief stone, the corner, the chief cornerstone, verse 22. Jesus, um, that verse is applied to Jesus in the New Testament um, as the stone that is rejected becomes the chief cornerstone in the building that God is making, the building called the kingdom of God, the, the people of God. And of course, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Come. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. That is, that is the Hosanna cry when, when, they, when, they, when Jesus was riding into Jerusalem and so on. It's great. Lots of good verses here to meditate on, sisters and brothers. This psalm, sisters and brothers, are, are there to help us, especially when we're going through those difficult patches in our lives we we pull out a psalm and that's why it's good to take note of these psalms many of us only have psalm 23 which is fine but it's not the only psalm of comfort in the psalter this is a good one to remember when enemies are out surround us on every side god is there his mercy endures forever amen and our New Testament reading is 1st John chapter 3. 1st John, 1st John, the first letter of John, not St. John, not the Gospel of John. But 1st John, which is close to the end of the Bible. 1st John chapter 3, all of it, all of it, yes, all of it. <coughs> First John chapter 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Just want to stop there. Just give God thanks. Moving on. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. 
The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother or sister. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. <clears throat> we should love one another. Do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set, and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask, because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. Hallelujah. There's a lot here and I'm not going to, because it's just, it's just some, 24 verses of power-packed truth, dynamic truth, explosive truth, dynamite truth. And, um, and so I, I'm, I, I don't have the time to, to explore all 24 verses. Uh, let's pick out a few. Let's pick out a few. The bit that I stopped and meditated on at the beginning we know, oh, it's a wonderful statement, isn't it? We know. I, I love John's writing. He said there are certain things we know. We're not guessing. We're not assuming. We're not, we're not even so much believing. We know these things. We know. We know. And he said, um, dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is the goal of our salvation, sisters and brothers, is to be like Jesus. To radiate with his glory. And one day we will. Gradually, in, as, we, as we continue to love one another, as we continue to obey his commands in the second part of this chapter, as we continue to trust him and believe in him, we grow more and more closer to him and we reflect his glory more and more. But one day when we see him face to face, 
we will be like him. We will radiate with his glory. I look forward to that day. Oh, I pray for that day. The day when I see Jesus face to face and I become, I become transformed into his image and his likeness. Hallelujah. Um, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil, verse 8. <clears throat> Jesus came to destroy Satan's kingdom, you could say. And, and he did. Yeah, I know Satan is still alive and well, but his kingdom has been destroyed. In fact, his kingdom is in pieces because of the power of Jesus Christ. It is only a matter of time when all the walls will finally crumble. <laughs> and he will have no more power over the world. In fact, he has no power over the believer. If it's one thing John is telling us here, is that we don't, we, we don't, we who are born of God do not live any longer in a sinful life. The devil has no more power over us. Our sins, of course, it doesn't mean that we no longer sin. Just to say, uh, it, it means we don't, we no longer sin habitually as we don't, we no longer enjoy sinning. We no longer desire to sin. Sisters and brothers, let me just tell you this. If you're a believer, you do not desire sin and you do not enjoy sinning. That doesn't mean you don't sin. In fact, it is that very point. The fact is, when we do sin, it cuts us deeply. It affects our spirit. It affects our relationship with God. And we are sorry. That is, that is a sign of a true Christian. If, if, if a person sins and, and it means nothing to them and they carry on doing the things, disobeying God, living a life in rebellion to Jesus Christ, that person is not a follower of Christ. That person is not a Christian. The point is, a Christian does no, no longer desires to live in sin. No longer desires, no longer finds it pleasurable to rebel against God. The Christian, the Christian has a heart to obey God. doesn't mean that we always do it. And it doesn't mean that we always perfectly do it. In fact, we fail every day, but it's because we, because we realize that failure and want to and, and, and recognize how um, uh, our, our shortcoming and want to do what is right is a sign of our faith, is a sign that we are in fact believers. The unbeliever, the, the sinner without God, the sinner without Christ has no intention, has no desire. To repent and leave their life of sin. All right, I, I leave it there. As I said, I can't. I can't believe. Let's let's <laughs> let's stop there. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the great words of the Apostle John. That Lord, that day coming when we shall see you as you are, and we shall be like you. As so Lord, we hasten that day. We pray for that day. We pray for that day when we will see your face to face and in, in glory we will be transformed like a, like a caterpillar into a butterfly. We will be completely transformed into your image and your likeness. Lord, oh, give us a desire for that day. Give us a Give us uh, uh, the, 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 the heart to pray, the faith, the hope to, to pray and believe for that day, that day to come when we are more, when we will see you face to face and all will be well. Uh, oh, Lord, we thank you. Give us the grace, Lord, as we, as, as John says here, we have the spirit in us. So help us by your spirit not to continue to sin and when we do sin when we do fall short of your glory when we do break your commands when we when we 
rebel against you. Lord, drive us to yourself. Draw us to you by your spirit. Lord, may we turn in repentance and in sorrow for our sins, we pray. Receive your grace of healing and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And of course, we continue to pray for those on our prayer list. I do want to pray for Mr. Patel, um, who has not been well, he and his wife. And so we pray for Mr. Patel. And uh, Mr. Patel is the owner of the corner shop who gives us um, food sometimes for our food bank. And so, Lord, we pray for him. We pray for Mr. Patel and his wife. And we ask for your grace upon him. We ask for healing. We ask, Lord, that you will strengthen him in body, in mind and spirit. Lord, I pray for him and his family. And we continue to pray for those on our list. We we pray for um, Dean and we pray for Jane Lindsay. <clears throat> uh, we continue to pray for others who are suffering in any way, especially those who are in pain and in distress tonight. Lord, we re remember them, we pray in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. And so let's um one more prayer. Prayer for the sick, general prayer for the sick. Especially during this time of COVID, we continue to pray for, for those who are anxious and fearful and those who are suffering from COVID, those who are actually sick. I'm not sick, but those who are sick, we pray for them tonight. And we pray for God's healing touch upon our world. And so, Lord, we pray for the world. We pray for your mercy upon us. Lord, grant us grace, we pray. Stay your hand of judgment and bring us your salvation and deliverance, Lord, we pray. We pray for this world, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer in fact let's um let's pray the jesus prayer lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me a sinner lord jesus christ son of the living god have mercy upon us sinners lord jesus christ son of the living god have mercy upon our sinful world amen and so merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night, those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and rest and comfort tonight, sisters and brothers, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.